Hey guys, it's Sam for Ryzen Lab, and in this video, we're going to take an overlook of the new user interface in Ryzen UV 2024. But before we do that, we're going to take a look at the old user interface and uh, have a quick chat about why we thought these changes should be made. Okay, so here we are in 2023, so this is the old UI. And as you can see, all the panel settings at the top here are exposed, they're all visible, even though the user might not need all of them. Also, these panels at the side here, uh, they can be closed up, but they're persistent, they're always there. And you can see that when these bottom panels are open, they actually take up quite a bit of real estate in terms of the UV space, uh, the UV view even. The UI in general looks a little bit cluttered. Now, there's two problems associated with this. One is it looks scary to new users. If you're new to Ryzen UV and you open this up, the thought might go through your head, wow, this is quite overwhelming. This also presents a problem to us as well because we want to add new features and give you the tools you need, but this will only compound the problem of a cluttered UI. The more stuff we put in there, the more panels we're gonna to have to have, the more real estate is gonna to need to be taken up. So let's move on over to Ryzen UV 2024 and see what we've done about this. So here it is, Ryzen UV 2024 and its new interface. I'm sure you'll all agree it's much cleaner, not as overwhelming for new users, and it also gives us the ability to add new features without making the UI worse in terms of real estate. So let's go through this. If we look at the bar at the top, you can see that well, first of all, the order has been rearranged. First, we have the UV sets. Next, we have the seams panel, unwrap, and then a bunch of stuff that you may want to do before you pack. So we've tried to organize the order in a way which makes more sense. Now, you may be looking at this uh, top bar here and thinking, okay, what happened to all the settings that were previously exposed? Well, we now have a new attribute system. So if you look at each panel, you will see a new button, which is this one here. And it's present in the UV set seams, every panel at the top. So if I were to go up to UV set and click on this, you can see on the right hand side, all the attributes associated with the UV set are now living here. And the same is true for the seams panel and the unwrap panel. So we've put the frequently used functions up front. So they're still exposed on the bar at the top here. And anything deeper can be accessed through this attributes button and displayed on the right here. Further, you may be in a situation where you want to view the attributes for, say, the seams panel and the unwrap panel. And you don't want to have to keep flipping between them to, you know, get to them. Because once you press the seams attribute button, and then move over to unwrap and press that one, the seams ones disappear. So we've put a lock button in this panel that you can activate here. You can see it's blue now. And when I press the attribute button for the unwrap panel, you can see the seams are still there in place. And I can even lock this unwrap panel too, and then move on to say similar, which is now displayed underneath. So you can really customize what you want displayed here on the right and what to keep there on the right too. Okay, so I've unlocked my panels now. So we're back to what it was at default and we're in the UV sets attributes. Now you may notice that we've got the ability to expand subsections in the panels themselves. So if you look at the UV sets attributes, you'll see that we've got these sub headers that you can now fold up and expand. So you may be in a situation where you don't want to be distracted with things you don't need. So you can fold them up and then just focus on the bit that you do need. You may have also noticed that the groups panel seems to be missing from the top here, and that's because it's been moved. So if we move over to the left here and press this button, we'll get this new fly out panel, which contains islands and groups and the group outliner. So at the bottom here, you'll have the tools that you're used to. And we now have this group's outliner. This here represents the name of the tile. And if I select that, you'll see that the tile is highlighted. And under this, it will display the hierarchy of groups. So let's just um, select a few islands here. And I'm going to isolate these by pressing I. And I'm going to group some of these. So 
let's just grab all of these and we'll press G to put them in a group. And you will see that group zero is now displayed as a child of the tile. And if I grab these two here and put them in their own group, you'll see that G1 is underneath the tile as well. You'll also notice that the group shape is being represented by the icon in the list. So I'm going to grab this group and I'm going to drag it over this one. And I'm going to press add. Now this group is nested within this group. And if we have a look at the hierarchy now, you can see that this nested group is now a child of the top group. So this makes things much clearer in terms of the hierarchy and what's going on. You can also select things from, from up here as well. So like I said, you can select the tile or group zero or group one, and they all get highlighted uh, appropriately. Okay, we're back. Uh, I've unnested that group and all islands are now in just a single group. And I want to talk about the look of the group containers because these have changed too and they can be customized. So if we look at the display options in the group outliner, right at the bottom here, you'll see display. And we can turn on and off the label using this button. We can also show the buttons for lock and select content. We can do that by clicking this one here. And as you can see in the middle of the group, those appear. We can also turn on and off the island color outlines that mirror the group color with this icon here. So you can see that the edges of the islands are just displaying the color for cuts. And if I turn this back on, the outlines will match the group color that they belong to. We can also turn on and off the group container borders. Currently, they're not on. But if I press this icon, you can see that it's now got a border around the group. We can also turn off the handles as well. So these little corner pieces here, by using this icon, we can actually turn off the display of them too. And last but not least, we can change the opacity of the group as well. So if we turn this up, we can see that the group is much more solid now and not as subtle as it was a moment ago. So let's turn this back down. Okay, next in the outliner panel, you'll notice that there's three tabs at the top. We're currently in islands and groups, which we've just gone over. And next is trim sheets. These are the new trim sheet tools in Ryzen UV 2024. I won't be going over them in this video because this is about the UI. There will be a separate video going in depth about the trim sheet tools and hotspots and everything else associated with it. The next tab, we've got tags. You can now tag islands. This is really important when using trim sheet hotspotting, but it also offers an alternative to grouping islands in terms of categorizing them. So I can demonstrate this by selecting a bunch of islands here, going down to the bottom here and saying create, and it'll ask me for a name. I'm just going to put test one and OK it. Now all of these islands have the tag of test one. And it makes selecting them really nice and easy. I can either double click on the name of the tag here in the outliner. Or I can highlight it and hit select and it will select all of them too. There is another way islands can be tagged, and this actually brings me on to the next item in my list, which is the viewport contextual menu. If I right click in the viewport now, we will get a bunch of options here. So you can change mode, and it even gives us the shortcuts and a load of other functions as well. But if I select islands, I can right click and you'll get a different menu. So here I can assign these islands to, to the tag test one, which you just saw me create, or I can create a new one and call this test two. And these will belong to that tag. So depending on what you've got selected and what you're doing, if you right click in the viewport, you'll get a contextual menu. Okay, so I've cleared those tags and I've closed the outliner panel. And you may be thinking, where have the panels that were at the bottom of the UV viewport, where have they gone? 
Well, these have actually been incorporated into other tools, which makes much more sense now. So two of the panels that were at the bottom were the transform panel and the soft transform panel. And they have both been moved to the transform tool. So now when you select transform, it will open up attributes that are directly related to transforming UVs. So here we can see you can straighten and flip and align and the flip tools here as well. And that's where the transform panel lives now. At the top, you can see the transform panel here, which used to be at the bottom here. Same story for the soft transform as well. These are now part of the transform tools attributes. Two of the other panels that used to be at the bottom was the UDIM panel and the UV tiles panel. And they can be now found in the attributes to the UV set. So if you go in there, everything related to how you set up your UV channels, texture scaling, the tile itself, and UDIM. So here we can see the UDIM panel and the tile attributes too. One more panel that used to be at the bottom is the snapping panel. This has been moved and changed to be incorporated into the viewport itself. So if we look up here, this is the snapping tools now. So you can enable snapping by turning this on and off. So if we turn snapping on, hit the drop down, we can see the grid, point and trim are enabled and you can say, hey, I want margin to and pixel. And then when you enable this on and off, everything that is uh, highlighted here will be activated and anything that isn't highlighted won't be. I think you'll agree that it's much cleaner occupying this amount of space in this drop down than it would be having a panel all to itself. That brings me to drop down buttons in general. Uh, if we look at the top here and select this, all of these have now been wrapped up in a single icon. Uh, you can either single click and then select what you want, or you can long press and release on the option that you want. You'll also notice that the drop downs are now accompanied with text, so you, it's very, very clear what you're pressing. A few more examples of this, we've got one in packing as well. Pack and pack translate are now under the same icon. And this brush here, unfold and optimize brush are under the same icon too and also the display modes in the viewport. So we've got polygon wireframe and poly wire. Speaking of drop downs, we have a more standard drop down menu behavior too now. If we look down here at this drop down menu, it used to be the case that you'd have to press and hold, go down to your option and then release. That is no longer necessary. You can just do a single click and then scroll the menu and again, single click and your option is selected. Viewport options are now in a transient dialog. So if you look up here, you can see this attribute button for the, for the viewport. And if we click on that, all of our options related to the viewport are in here. This has replaced the tiny icons that were present previously with some new additions too. We also have a more standard behavior for numeric input fields. So if we go over to the side here and look at map resolution, it used to be the case that you would enter a value in here, press enter, and you would still be in the numeric field. So you'd come back to Ryzen UV to maybe, I don't know, do an unfold operation. So you'd press U, nothing would happen. And then you'd look back in the field and see that you had a U typed there. That is no longer the case. So if I put 2048 as my map resolution and press enter, I am now out of the input field. The docked panels on the right and the new uh, outliner panel are now resizable. So you can grab these and resize them as you wish. Something that should make high DPI screen users very, very happy is that now high DPI screens 4K and above are now properly supported on all platforms. This means there is no need to enable the high DPI override for, for an application within the OS, which means no blurry UI. Speaking of which, we now have full UI scaling within Ryzen UV. So if we go up to Edit, Preferences Dialog, and scroll down to 
main UI settings, we can see the scaling is set to one. And if I set this to two, this happens. So this scales icons, text, panels, and the dialogue windows. This will be extremely useful for people that have 4K plus screens, but feel the UI elements are too small. There's no need to play around with the OS scaling settings as this can now be done directly within the application. So that's it guys, that's the overview for the UI in Ryzen UV 2024. Let me know what you think in the comments and uh, give us a little bit of feedback about what you think about it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click on the bell to be notified of new tutorials. You can check out some of the videos on screen now and you can also visit us on our website, across social media and our Discord server. Cheers guys, bye.